Hey Raiders, continuing our discussion of one-dimensional motion scenarios. So looking at number 25, a stone is thrown vertically upward with a speed of 12 meters per second from the edge of an 80 meter cliff. And then looking for two things here, how much later does it reach the bottom of the cliff and what total distance did it travel? And notice the emphasis on distance, distance and displacement. Remember when an object changes direction, like a ball thrown upward that ultimately ends up going downward, distance is not the same thing as displacement. So I'm just gonna sketch this scenario here. So the cliff is 80 meters high and the stone is thrown vertically upward at 12 meters per second. So the two things we're looking for here, how much later does it reach the bottom of the cliff? That's something that's, you know, you can be, do that a couple different ways. We can analyze up to the peak to get that time and then analyze down from the peak, get that time and add them together. Or if you have the appropriate amount of information, which we do, you can analyze it more efficiently for the whole trip. However, if you look at part B, what total distance did it travel? Well, in this case, we are gonna to need to analyze how high it went because that's gonna be part of what we have to factor in for the total distance. But for right now, let's just do part A. And we're gonna analyze the whole trip. So given information, we know the initial velocity is 12 meters per second. And then acceleration from gravity, even on the way up, it's still being pulled downward the entire time, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And displacement, as opposed to distance, displacement is where something ends up compared to where it started. So it ends up 80 meters below where it starts when we're talking about the entire trip. So we can find time. So this is going to set up for the quadratic. D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. So negative 80 equals 12T plus one half times negative 9.8T squared. So this is the scenario we've looked at before that we're gonna to wanna to put this in standard form. Right. Of AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. So for us, one half times negative 9.8 is negative 4.9. So negative 4.9 T squared plus 12 T. And then in order for us to be able to use this to do the quadratic formula, we need to make it equal zero. So we'd add 80 to both sides. So plus 80 equals zero. So negative 4.9 is our A. 12 is our B and 80 is our C. So we can do a couple different things here, but the goal to figure out what values of time will make this equation true. Again, you can do this manually with the quadratic formula, negative B plus or minus radical B squared minus four AC all over two A. There's nothing wrong with that. And we have our A, B and C values to use here, but that would obviously be kind of tedious. So to save a little time, we can either use the quad tick graphing calculator program to do this for us or Desmos, and then pull the relevant information that we're looking for off of the graph. So I'm gonna use the quad tick program in the calculator here. So under program, quad tick, short for quadratic. Now just enter the A, B, and C values for the quadratic equation you put in standard format. So A equals negative 4.9, B equals 12, and C equals 80. So we're gonna get two possible values for time. So time is either approximately negative three seconds or approximately 5.45 seconds. So here's a case where you have to separate the pure math from the physics application of it. Negative three is a perfectly valid mathematical solution to this equation. But since in this case, time uh, T represents time, we know we have to have positive time. So that's the answer to our question. How much total time is it in the air? or how much later does it 